Iron Banner is coming and going, and I finally got the roles that I wanted to talk about on this thing. I think it's a must-have bow. No doubt, as far as PvP, bows are the most annoying thing right now. A lot of players are talking about them. They are pretty strong, especially with some changes that they've made. When this bow first came out a while ago, that was season 10. It was one of the best bows in the game, and I think it's right back to being that again. In the in-between, there was sunsetting. A lot of things have changed. There's a couple things that I really want you to look for. A couple for PvE one for the Crucible, and some other things can work as well. The original role was no distractions or Archer's Tempo, then Vorpa Weapon or Eye of the Storm. These combinations can still be made, and what was nice about the original one, it had Elastic String for the faster draw time, but Natural Fletching was kind of a miss, and it had an Accuracy Masterwork. So this thing could be really updated, and what's so nice, they've made these Iron Banner weapons really obtainable. You can focus them. I think it took me about 25 or 30 total, 20 of the stags, to get the ones that I wanted to show, but if you want one, you could definitely keep trying to get it. No matter where we are, bowstring, arrow, masterwork, it's gonna be draw time. It's kind of like snapshot for snipers. It's just one of the immediate picks. The number one bowstring is elastic. It gives you the most draw time that you can get. Draw time masterwork, of course. And if you grab those, the arrow could be anything. This is a precision bow. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but straight fletching, fiberglass, all of those are going to be good. In the third column, no distractions, shot swap, archer's tempo, elemental capacitor, pugilist slick draw. Final column, dragonfly, vorpal weapon, eye of the storm, swashbuckler, precision instrument, golden tricorn. So this is an arc precision bow, and the first thing that I want to talk about is the awesome combination that only this thing has of pugilist dragonfly. And I know what you're thinking, pugilist dragonfly, but there's some really cool things that you can do with this the only thing that can get it, and then we're pairing it with wild card. As we've talked about before with the wild card trait, it drops the Telesto Bolts, and any of the perks that you have on the weapon, the Telesto Bolt applies that. So in this case, when you get a headshot final blow, you get some melee energy for Pugilist. All of the collaterals from Dragonfly also give you melee energy, and all those Telesto Bolts that stay there for like 10 seconds, if an enemy walks by and gets it down, you're getting melee energy. The same rules apply, you want the draw time, and my role has that. Elastic String, Fiberglass, Reload Masterwork, Pugilist, Dragonfly, Wildcard. So it's a 612 draw time. Why I wanted this combination, there's a ton of other use cases, and those are out there for you to explore, but I really wanted it specifically for Strand Warlock. There's a couple of exotics that you can add, but the whole goal with the bow itself, a lot of melee energy back. And Pugilist also has that second part, dealing melee damage briefly improves this weapon's handling. But on Broodweaver, we have three melee charges. The Arcane Needle unravels, and with Unravel, as they take additional damage, they create unraveled projectiles that seek out other targets. So on the base level here, I'm throwing the Arcane Needle at a target, and I'm starting an Unravel chain. Because I get headshots, the dragonfly explosion spreads out. If it tags other unraveled enemies, they're going to spread unravel. And with a lot of enemy density, it's literally fireworks. So the whole goal with the bow on Broodweaver, throw out a needle, start the unravel chain. All the bow kills and dragonfly collaterals are netting you that melee energy. And of course, the wild card Telesto bolts, that'll get you some melee energy. But it just keeps spreading and spreading. Especially if you land that needle on a larger target, yellow bar, you shoot all the adds around, the dragonfly explosion will splash that target, doing a little bit extra damage, spreading more. It is awesome. And you can do this with the buffed hunter strand melee. Just make sure that you catch it when it comes back. All your dragonfly kills, you're going to have it back in no time. And there's things you could do with void and solar and arc and all those things, but this loop with broodweaver and this bow, I love it. Really, really good. Again, this is the only weapon in the game to have this combination, and you could utilize it a number of different ways. So that's what I wanted. It could have been better with a draw time masterwork, but I at least got elastic string. At least I have a faster draw time. I've had a number of Archer's Tempo Vorpal Weapon rolls. And in the background, you're seeing Archer's Tempo Vorpal Weapon. But the original point of the stag, it has elastic string on it. So the only way to beat it would be elastic string, draw time masterwork, Archer's Tempo Vorpal. You can also do Archer's Tempo Precision Instrument. So it can be better than the original version from a while ago, but you're gonna have to land on it. And again, as I started with, if you really want the bow, you can just continually playing Iron Banner, I know. But it's one of the easiest paths to get a weapon that we have currently in the game. And it's not explosive head, but this bow with Vorpal and Archers has always been good versus champions and anti-barriers like right here. Especially right now, this is a 1840 Master. I'm far away. I get the artifact mod that weakens them. 17 levels below, Vorpal Weapon one-shots this shield. 
It does great as an arc bow. Now we've seen precision instrument recently with the Vanguard solar one. This can also go archer's tempo precision instrument, but again, that could be adept. You can do the draw time. Technically it's gonna be better, but this is gonna synergize with your arc subclass a lot better. Amplified things like that. There's some things to mess around with golden tricorn doing 50% more damage. Pretty easy to get Golden Tricord going in PvE, but there's a ton of options to look at and go for on this thing when it comes to PvE. I wanted Pugilist Dragonfly, you saw why, it's incredible. I'm going to use this bow, especially on Broodweaver, and I just recently started pairing it with Felwinter, so now I'm debuffing the area, debuffing the larger target, spreading Unravel, it's just great. Every season we have party activities, I'm probably going to use this bow in this setup. It's just so fun, so good. But you could try for that better version of Archer's Tempo of Warple. Archer's Tempo Precision Instrument. There's a lot to like here. Bows like this don't come around too often. Moving on to the Crucible, I got the main roll to go for. It's amazing, a menace, a powerhouse, annoying. What you need to do with it, it takes some time to get used to, but once you start getting the vibe on what you need to do, it's very powerful. Elastic String, Draw Time Masterwork, Archer's Tempo, Swashbuckler. And I have Fiberglass that gives an accuracy boost, but takes away some stability, that's fine. 576 Draw Time, then Archer's Tempo. The whole goal with the bow is a melee final blow for swash times five, and that will one shot for 202. This is a direct step up from the previous precision one shot bow, Biting Winds, and mine was moving target swashbuckler. This one has the added archer's tempo on top. In this roll, first of all, because you have elastic and the draw time with archers, it's just a good bow. Not even taking the swash times five into account at all. These things hit heavy, 151 to the head, 101 to the body. If you don't get swash going, it's still a great dueling bow. A beast of base. And with a setup like this with archers, since it hits so heavy, you could precision crit for 151, then archers tempo a body shot right after for 101, use that draw speed for the two shot. But the goal is swash five. I've been doing it on shade binder, running Osmio. I have two cold snaps. I have the freeze rift, land a melee and go. But it's achievable a number of different ways, such as the Hunter Atherus's Embrace. And I pair it with a Trace Rifle because as you land crits, it is instant max stack for the heavy knife on Atherus. You run around, Find the target, get the knife final blow, and you go. You have the Greaves on Titan, you have the Arc Melee on Warlock, and there's some others too. Pair it with a Trace, a 120, a 140 Hand Cannon, whatever you want. I prefer a 120 most of the time, Malediction, Explosive Payload, because I can crit, then switch to Malediction with the Explosive Payload Body Shot, it will down, but it's a powerful bow. And there's some other things that you can do besides this, Golden Tricorn, and let's think about this. You could do Radiant Golden Tricorn with Golden Tricorn times one in Radiant. It's 191 per crit. That's a one-shot crit to five resilience and below. You could possibly go Arc Buddy Warlock with the Super Turret. Golden Tricorn one at base is 174. You pair that with the three Arc Buddy hits that come in. It's a down. Over 200 damage. And this is an Arc Bow, so it just synergizes with the Arc subclass. Those fragments and being amplified, things like that. So I didn't review it up until now because I needed to see how Pugilist Dragonfly would perform, and it's amazing. And I'm a one-man show as far as content, like I grind for all these things. I wanted to get the Elastic Draw Time Archer's Swash, and I did, so I was ready to put the review out. It doesn't disappoint. And looking at the perk combos, there's no distractions, there's a ton of different things. Always get what you need for what you like to do. You can always fall back on Archer's Vorpal and the old one, but this is definitely an upgrade if you land. Be looking for Pugilist Dragonfly, the only weapon in the game that has it. And when Iron Banner's there for the week, pretty much the Crucible playlist is locked down. So if you're looking for things to go for, I think that this warrants that. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Point of the Stag down below. What roles are you liking? Do you have any tips? Is there anything you can recommend? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.